Hey plant people, welcome back. Today I am here to talk to you about one of the most infamous houseplant pests that I think regardless of how you take care of your plants or what your conditions are, this is one that is inescapable. Even Summer Rain Oaks has talked about how she has had to deal with the infamous fungus gnat. I personally last year had a fungus gnat infestation at one point that kept me up all hours of the night searching my plants. I ended up having to throw out so many of my plants because I brought in one infested plant from Walmart that I thought I could save before I really knew anything about fungus gnat treatments. It was infested with larvae in the soil. I thought I could treat it. No. They ended up spreading to all of my house plants. With that being said, I have tried every single house plant fungus snap prevention and treatment method that is out there right now. I promise you, I've tried them all. Do you know how many freaking bottles of peroxide I have in this house right now? Probably 12. So, I'm not gonna say I'm an expert, but I'm gonna let you know I have tried all of these and I'm gonna tell you exactly what does work because I have almost no fungus gnats in my house right now. But first, let's go over all of the other houseplant, fungus gnat, pest control, whatever methods, and let me tell you exactly how they did for me. Let's first talk about peroxide. This is the one that I actually tried first when I noticed that the larvae were already in the soil. So a lot of people swear by peroxide as far as them being a good treatment for fungus gnat larvae and being good for the roots of your plants, etc, etc. I wish I had footage to show you, but I'm just here to tell you that I literally poured peroxide in the soil over top of these fungus gnat larvae that I could see with my eye. I poured peroxide over them in a tray, in my big silver tray that I repot with, and watched the peroxide do absolutely nothing to these hundreds of larvae. I diluted it initially and then I ended up just pouring straight up peroxide onto it. Mind you, the plant is not alive. I threw that plant out so fast and basically stomped on it in the process. But this peroxide, nothing. Did absolutely nothing to kill those larvae. So to those people that swear by peroxide and say that it helps to prevent fungus gnats or treat fungus gnat larvae in the soil, it may work well for aerating the soil, but I'm here to tell you it did zero for actual fungus gnat larva. Jesus Christ. Number two, Ceylon cinnamon. And this is specifically Ceylon cinnamon, not the regular, like, I don't know what other kind of cinnamon this is. I ordered probably about four bags this size of Ceylon cinnamon. Guess what I have? A lot of freaking Ceylon cinnamon, that's what I have. My plants smelled amazing, they smelled so good. Every time I watered, the aroma was intoxicating, but that doesn't matter when I still have fungus gnats in my soil. I went from sprinkling it on the soil initially to I put a layer of it on the soil at one point and nothing. If anything, the thicker the layer, it just trapped moisture on the surface of my plants and I could see, I could see the fungus gnats dancing around in the cinnamon. I had it in every plant in my house, I promise you. I still had fungus gnats. So I have a lifetime supply of cinnamon at this point. I do still use cinnamon on my house plants for fungus because it is a natural um, antifungal. Yeah, a natural antifungal. So like if I have a cutting, I'll put it on the, um, the open cutting to prevent it from rotting. Does it work? I don't really know. Um, and of course I use it in my normal cooking. Um, so I'll never run out of actual Ceylon cinnamon, but I'm here to tell you that aside from making your houseplants smell amazing, um, it did nothing for the fungus gnats because, and I know this because, and I kept it on there for a long time, mind you, 
I also had fungus gnat traps at the same time that showed me that there were still fungus gnats up in this piece. Moving right along, you will see that I have a wonderfully used up bag of diatomaceous earth. Do I think diatomaceous earth works? To a degree. Its actual like mechanism of action makes sense to me and I understand why it should work, but I will tell you in the process it destroyed my plants. Destroyed. And if you think about it, they say that diatomaceous earth is like the, what do they call it? Is it like silica or something? Basically like tiny little shards that are supposed to slice and dice the fungus gnats that make it into the soil and then the larva that's dancing around in there. They're supposed to also get cut up so that they ultimately can't go to adulthood. If you put a good enough layer on top, basically you can sprinkle a small layer on top, but if it's just a very thin little dusting, it's not going to be efficient because there's still going to be a lot of room for the fungus gnats to reproduce. So if you put a thicker layer on top, one, I'm going to tell you that it keeps your soil moist. Again, annoying. Two, I'm going to tell you that as soon as it gets wet, it stops working. And how do you not get it wet unless you're bottom watering all your plants and then generally if you're bottom watering you want it to at least somewhat soak up to the top so that you know you adequately watered your plant. Again, just too many um, opportunities for this to not work. But three, I'm going to tell you that this single-handedly killed multiple plants of mine because it became a part of the soil and turned my soil to garbage. It turns it to like little like rocky bits like just like clumpy, just like garbage soil. And I can imagine that this is robbing your plant of nutrients. It's probably so large of like a, so large of a substance that it's blocking your roots from being able to pull up water. But even so, it, I feel like, this is my personal opinion, mind you, it caused root rot on some of my plants because it was holding moisture down by the roots. And then also, you know, blocking it from getting its other nutrients and making my soil composition just really crappy. I have not used diatomaceous earth at all this season because I learned my lesson and I learned what does work. Um, and also if you don't have a mask you could be breathing this in and it's really dangerous for us to breathe in these fine little particles so mind you I guess everybody does have masks nowadays regardless. Do I suggest diatomaceous earth? If you have a very, very terrible outbreak on your plants, potentially, because it might put a dent in, in some of the, um, it might put a dent in some of the babies, but would I suggest this as a long-term solution? Absolutely not. Would I put this in the soil of my expensive plants? Absolutely not. I'd put it in some freaking Sansevieria and maybe like Golden Pothos. The moment that you mention that you have a fungus gnat problem in any house plant, house plant forum or group, there's always going to be someone that's going to tell you to try putting rocks, pebbles on top of your soil and also to try putting a thin layer of sand on top of your soil. I've tried both. As you can see here, I got a whole container full of pebbles, so that should tell you something that I haven't used and I don't currently have any sand because I don't need it. Because again, just like the other methods that I told you, both of these will, the rocks are gonna do nothing to prevent the fungus gnats from getting in. They're so small, they can get through your screen door. I promise you that they will work their way down underneath these pebbles and make their way to the soil. You, I mean, you'd have to stack the rocks up so high to prevent fungus gnats from being able to get in that it's just not even, worth it, it would be ridiculous. On top of that, sand is going to hold in moisture on the very top of your soil. And I have also watched those little buggers dancing in the sand on top of my soil. I'm serious, I wish I would have taken videos of it because it's just so ridiculous, it's hard to even believe. I have watched fungus gnats dance and duck and dive and do the jive down in the soil or down in the sand on top of my plants. Um, I had a thin layer at one point, I tried a thicker layer, again it just holds moisture on the very top of the soil and basically you're creating like a little clubhouse like it's freaking out of the box for these fungus gnats 
to have the perfect moist protected environment to raise all of their uh, families so and they're not gonna pay any rent they're gonna just wreck your whole life so pebbles I do not suggest uh, they're gonna keep the soil moist on top as well the fungus gnats can wiggle their way down between sand does nothing um, but create a perfect environment so that's a no to the sand no to the pebbles the last method that in my opinion does not really work although it's not something that I wouldn't ever do again um, we have dish soap which probably I would not use the Dawn antibacterial dish soap I would probably use something more like Myers or just something that wasn't antibacterial because I personally would just be worried that the antibacterial soaps would remove the good bacteria in my soil and then I feel like that would definitely make my plants more inclined to get bacterial infections um, and probably some fungal infections that's just my thought process same thing with the human body fast forward though basically taking a drop of dish soap inside of a spray bottle and spraying my leaves I would still use that method for like spider mites and any other bug that there might be I don't currently um, but I'm not opposed to it but as far as using this for a method to control fungus gnats from getting on to the soil, I have not seen it be effective. I tried this in the very beginning along with these other annoying methods and I don't know if it's after it dries up that they can still manage to get in there and then honestly the composition of what you're spraying on the soil is mostly water anyway so you're just making the top layer nice and moist in a perfect environment for the fungus gnats and all of their family reunions so again not one that I would suggest because I do have some methods that I currently use that work perfectly for me so why would I need to do that if I have these methods now for the methods that actually do work for me I will kind of tell you my step-by-step -step process number one let's start with the way that I water my plants which I do believe that I discussed this in a previous video but just to go over it again I do use mosquito bits in my watering what I do is I dump I will open up this whole thing I water with like a, a tea pitcher and I will dump some inside of the pitcher to kind of make like to let them sit in the bottom and whatever water I put inside I want it to soak into these mosquito bits and kind of create um, a mosquito bit tea as they call it. This is a perfect example of what it looks like after I mix it all together. This is some water that I was using last night to water my plants. If you look in the bottom you'll see the mosquito bits down there. Um, basically the mosquito bits hold a beneficial bacteria I believe. Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's some sort of beneficial bacteria that basically kills fungus gnat larva. Again, it will not kill adult fungus gnats, but it is toxic to fungus gnat larva. So they are inside these little bits. They're called mosquito bits, but they work for fungus gnats as well. And some people will put these on top of the soil and then just water through them. I'm going to forewarn you that these get moldy on top of the soil. So I put them in my water and let the water soak in and make like a little mosquito bit tea. And some of them will come out on top of the soil um, when I'm watering. I use this like slotted part, the slotted part here, so that they don't really come through. A few will make it through, but it's not a big deal. They don't usually cause like a mold issue or anything on top of my plants. So I will pour these in the bottom, pour water on top, let that sit for a few minutes. In addition to that, you're probably wondering why does this water look so murky. In addition to that, I will also use neem oil concentrate and pour a very small amount. I don't measure it. It's literally like a glug, like a glug, glug. Maybe it's like a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon to this whole pitcher. So I will pour a little bit of this concentrate in it as well and water, uh, also I will pour a little bit of Super Thrive in that water. That is my mixture that I water my plants with. And I will let that sit for a couple of minutes and water my plants and basically I am providing that neem mosquito bit mixture to the soil to kill any fungus gnat larva that might be in there and then to help protect the soil from any future potential invaders like adults that might 
somehow get through and start to want to try to lay eggs in my soil. I have not changed this fungus net tape probably since last season and over winter so keep that in mind I just happened to find it like way in the back of one of my plants this was before I got my regimen down packed in addition to my watering regimen I also use fungus gnat tape I understand that it is not the prettiest looking thing but you don't want these fungus gnats in your soils just flying all around your face driving you insane so this is a little step that I take to make sure any fungus gnats that find their way into my house, maybe if I bring in a fresh plant, a fresh plant will always get a fungus gnat trap, no matter what, no matter if I see larva on the top of the soil or not. Um, I will prophylactically put one of these in and prophylactically water it with my fungus gnat soup so that any hidden little pests will never survive in this house and as of this season if I look around my house there are maybe at any given time probably like two fungus gnats per fungus gnat tape which is a big difference from this amount of fungus gnats on a tape. I do look at the soil of my plants before I leave the store. So last season, again, after I had this outbreak, I got really, really crazy and I would sit down on the floor with my flashlight and examine the soil. I still will do that if I have the opportunity, but you need to be looking at the soil surface of those plants before you bring them back into your house. And you can, you can do this once you get home if you're uncomfortable with doing it in public, um, but it is something that I know if I see an outbreak large enough on the soil surface, like you can see the larva moving around and it's not springtails, I know that this plant is not even worth purchasing. Last but not least, I never run out of neem oil spray. I do have the concentrate that I will mix in with water and, and spray my plants with, but I do occasionally also buy um, some Bonide already mixed together neem oil just so that I don't have to think about the ratios and worry that it's not gonna be strong enough should I get something like spider mites that are a little bit more resistant. But I spray all of my plants with neem oil. I've never had one have like a negative reaction. Fungus gnats won't get on the leaves of your plants. They only want the soil. So I just spray the leaves and then let whatever residual neem oil kind of trickle down to the soil. Um, and then I also will spray the soil surface if it's in between watering times, just in case there was like somebody just like at a rest stop or whatever on top of your soil, you know, just trying to take a little break from flying. No, sir, you're not, you're not staying here. So sorry, you're dead now. If the neem oil comes in direct contact with an adult fungus gnat, um, it will kill it, it will suffocate it. So I take that opportunity any chance I get. So again, y'all, these are the fungus gnat um, methods that I have tried, which is definitely most of them, I would say, um, that people would suggest to you on different forums and things. I've tried all of them, and these are the ones that worked for me. Um, should you have tried some of these other methods and you have a larger plant collection, let me know down in the comments below which ones you swear by and which ones were a no-go for you. I'm telling you, that Ceylon cinnamon smells good as a champ, but I can tell you it did 0% for me except for make my house smell good. If you have anything that I didn't include in these videos, I can't think of anything else. I'm telling you, I scoured the internet just sleepless nights looking for how to prevent and treat fungus gnats. Um, let me know what else has worked for you. Hey you guys, editing Shane here. I realized that I forgot to mention that last season I did transfer most of my plants over to terracotta with a very well draining mixture to provide uh, adequate drainage and to allow my soil to dry out properly in between waterings so that it didn't hold water for the fungus gnat families. Anyways, y'all, thank you so much for watching my video. Definitely go and follow my Instagram for daily pictures. And if you uh, like this content, please do subscribe. I will be doing a plant giveaway once I hit 2,000 subscribers. I appreciate y'all. Have a good day.